Hi, I want to work an example of summing vectors as a way of identifying what forces we need to be in equilibrium. So equilibrium is when we have no net force. So from Newton's second law, the acceleration is the net force divided by the inertia, the mass. So if our net force is zero, then in equilibrium our acceleration is zero. Now, just a reminder about equilibrium. Doesn't mean that the object isn't moving, necessarily. You can be in equilibrium and have motion. That's dynamic equilibrium, where the velocity is not zero, but it does remain constant. Same speed in the same direction. Now, static equilibrium is the case where we're not moving and no acceleration says we will remain not new, moving, and that's what we're looking at here. So I'm told that I have some sort of sign that's being supported by two cables, and I can measure the force along each cable. So cable one has a force of 150 newtons acting at an angle of 20 degrees from the horizon, and cable two has a force of 435 degrees acting at an angle 435 newtons acting at 126 degrees from the horizon. So those two forces clearly cannot put us in equilibrium because there's nothing yet in the downward direction. So there has to be some remaining force that we don't know about. But if we add up whatever that remaining force is, plus the force from cable one, plus the force from cable two, we have to get zero. So that means regardless of what's causing that remaining force, the total remaining force would have to equal minus the sum of force one and force two. So we could use various trig rules like laws of sines and cosines potentially to combine things together, but I like working direction by direction. And what we can say is, we have these forces and angles, we can break it up into what's happening in the x direction and what's happening in the y direction. And the rule of vectors says what happens in x stays in x, what happens in y stays in y. So for our force, if we're measuring our angle from the horizon, then our force is going to equal our total magnitude of our force times the cosine of the angle from the horizon in the x direction, i hat, plus the magnitude of our force times the sine of our angle from the horizon in the y direction, j hat. So for force one, we take 150 newtons times the cosine of 20 degrees, and that's going to give us 114.0 newtons in the x direction. And then I take 150 newtons times the sine of 20 degrees, and 150 newtons times the sine of 20 degrees gives me 51.3 newtons in the y direction, j hat. Now, I would do the same thing with force two. The magnitude of force two is 435 newtons. So I have 435 newtons times the cosine of 126 degrees. And because we're over 90 degrees, we get a negative sign. So we have 255.7 newtons in the negative i hat direction, negative x. And if I take the sine of 126 degrees, multiply it by my magnitude of 435 newtons, then that gives me 351.9 newtons in the positive y direction. So, I take F1 plus F2 and I add direction by direction. 141.0 newtons plus negative 255.7 newtons gives me 114.7 newtons in the negative x direction. And 51.3 newtons plus 351.9 newtons gives me 403.2 newtons in the positive y direction. So if F1 plus F2 is negative 114 newtons 
in the i hat direction plus 403.2 newtons in the what j hat direction then my remaining force would have to be plus 114.7 newtons i hat minus 403.2 newtons j hat so if we're asked for component form that would be our final answer and if we're asked about magnitude and direction we just use the pythagorean theorem our x component our y component, we square our x component, we square our y component, add them together, take the square root, and that gives me a hypotenuse of 419 newtons. And to find the angle, our opposite side, measuring our angle from the horizon, would be the y direction, negative 403.2 newtons. Our adjacent side, is our x component 114.7 newtons so the inverse tangent of my y component over my x component gives me negative 74 degrees so our result would be 74 degrees below the horizon thanks for watching